Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today we are on part 6 of the Procedural Node series, which is two parts away from what I would consider as level 2, where we actually make stuff difficult using texture coordinates. So make it through this tutorial, make it through the next one, and then uh, you're going to get onto some harder stuff with some cool results. And today, I just want to talk about kind of what addition, subtraction, multiplication, whatever, uh, what these things mean in terms of regions, which kind of sounds like nonsense until I explain what I mean, uh, but it's going to be very simple, and this is what I expect to be a very fast tutorial, although I said that last time and it ended up being uh, 15 minutes. So, uh, again, we have a plane. I said I won't say it again, but we'll do it. Uh, we have an object that is a plane. It has a material. I called it add multiply, and that material is the node network that I'm looking at over here. The reason this looks black is because nothing is connected to the surface of the material output, but you should know this by now. And you can see that I made two nodes over here. Don't worry about how I made them. I mean, this is how I made them if you actually dive into this. This is called a node group. Uh, I just grouped a bunch of nodes and just compacted them into one unit so you wouldn't have to see everything. Uh, eventually I'm going to teach you how to make these, but uh, what these node groups do is I'm going to connect this to the surface. Again, you can either do that manually or alt right click drag or control shift click. Uh, these are all ways to do it. And you can see what this does is it gives us a circle that is a bit off center. Again, the center is where this uh, 3D cursor is, and it's just a bit to the left. And what we want to think of this as is where there is a circle where it's white, we have a value of one, it's perfectly white, and then everywhere else is black, zero. So one in the uh, interior of the region and then zero on the exterior. And then if we switch over to this one, we have kind of the same thing, but it's just over to the right. So now here we have one and over here we have zero. Okay, cool. So what can we do with both of these together? So one's a bit to the left, one's a bit to the right. You can imagine that we can kind of make a Venn diagram out of this. So let me just add a math node. And this is kind of the focus of this video. Right now it's going to be set to add, and we're just going to be adding these two inputs, uh, which kind of gives us this Venn diagram looking thing. And let's think about why this makes sense. So in this region over here, being like the circle on the left, it looks, you know, a normal amount of white, the same as if we were to just have this node uh, only. So what's happening here is we have one from the circle on this node plus zero if we look at this one, uh, this region is black on this one, and it's white over here. And then together, they add to one. So what I'm trying to say is when we add things, uh, in the past, we've just been adding like two different numbers, as in two different values. So let me just make two values, and just plug those in here and here. We've been adding just two numbers, and then we know you know how this works. If we make this negative 0.5, we're going to get 0. Negative 0.5 plus 0.5 is 0. And we can do all kinds of stuff. But you see that it's the same shade of gray, white, or black everywhere. And we say that means that it's kind of uniform because we're just adding two numbers. Uh, it gives an output, and then it shows it. Same thing for multiplication or subtraction or whatever. But again, if we add something that doesn't look the same everywhere, like these circles, we actually get something more interesting. So the math node uh, doesn't just add things in general, it adds per point. So it will add the two values at this point, and at this point, and at this point, and it may give different results in different areas, which should be obvious if you're seeing this. So again, uh, this is going to be one, this is going to be one, and then where they intersect, where the Venn diagram, the, the area in common, uh, that is going to have a value of 2, and you can tell because it's a bit brighter. And again, if you remember, if you've actually been watching this whole series, the reason why, uh, even though it's above 1, since normally you do things between 0 and 1, the reason it's even brighter than the 1, which is normally not what we're used to, is because the color management, uh, our view transform is set to filmic instead of standard, uh, where standard caps off at 1, and then everything beyond it is white, and then filmic goes from 0 to infinity, where the higher you go, the brighter it gets. But just for this video, normally we use standard uh, just for this course, but for this video I'm going to use filmic just to show uh, that we can do addition beyond uh, 1, like it stores those values. Okay, so my point is addition just kind of combines things, right? So we add one circle, another, and now we have both of them together in kind of this peanut shape if you ignore that this area is brighter. And that's what we'd expect. So addition is kind of like an or. So this or this. Cool. What about multiplication? With multiplication, we only get the area in common, right? We only get uh, 
where the left and the right circle are intersecting. And let's think about why that's the case. So in this area, both circles exist. So they're both have a value of one, which means when we multiply them, it's one and it shows up here. But let's say something a bit to the left over here. What happens here? Well, it's on the left circle, which means it's one. But on the right circle, that area is just black. So focus on this area over here where my mouse is. Maybe I can, yeah, this area right here. So on the left circle, that is a one. And sorry about all the radiator noise, if you can hear it. That's going to be annoying. It's not going to stop. Um, on the right circle, though, uh, this is zero because you can see it's black. One times zero is zero, and that's why it kind of goes away. So multiplication is kind of like an and statement, meaning where is this and this at the same time? So just to reiterate, multiplication, can I erase this? Multiplication is and, uh, addition is or. And I can tell you're getting bored of this video, but I'm telling you we're going to be using these concepts all the time to like say we want uh, to combine regions, isolate them, do other stuff. This is very important. And, and to just understand what this math does on a per uh, point level. So again, we're adding or multiplying or whatever at every point on the plane. Okay, so now let's try to do something a bit more challenging. Let's say we want to do this circle, but we cut away this piece right here, kind of like the Apple logo where you take a cookie and eat it or eat a bite out of it. Well, what we what we would want to do is take this and subtract away this area over here. In other words, we take this and then we subtract, set this to subtract the other circle, which gives us this. And if you're not seeing this immediately, uh, you'll get used to it. It will make sense. And then what you have to remember is that since we are subtracting, this area over here isn't actually zero, even though it's black, it's like negative one in uh, most of this region over here. And we can see that if we should be able to see that if we do something like we're going to put another node here, another math node, and we're going to do less than, and we want to see where this is less than zero, meaning negative. And you can see right here, it's negative. But this is just very highly theoretical stuff. Um, okay, cool. So we know how to do and or kind of subtracting pieces away from each other. Let's try to combine all these ideas together for the final challenge of this video. So have something in my nose. Uh, see if you can figure this out before I show you. What we're going to try to do is have this shape, but then subtract away the interior. So we basically have two moons without the intersection in the middle. How would we do that? There are a bunch of ways. Think about it. Okay, let me show you two methods. Hopefully I can come up with two. So the first thing we do is we take everything and then we also want the intersection. So let me just duplicate shift D or control C, control V, set this to multiply, and then let's connect both of these. So we have our addition, we have our multiplication, I'm trying to show that, there you go. And then we just use subtraction, kind of like the same trick as before. So set this to subtract. And remember, we take the first thing and subtract away the second thing, this radiator, man. Take this, subtract this, gives us well, that didn't give us uh, what we expected. Let's think about why for a second. Okay, good. This is actually a good point. I didn't expect this. The reason why that this didn't actually take away the area from the middle, even though um, we did the subtraction, is remember, technically this area is two. It's not one. It's one plus one is uh, two. So we can either do some more math to fix that, or you might have been wondering what this clamp uh, button does. And what it does is if there's anything above one, it will just send it to one. If there's anything below zero, it will send it to zero. So it kind of gets rid of anything that's outside the zero to one range, uh, which is normally where we like to work. So I'm just going to set this to clamp. And you're going to see now it just does our addition as if we were seeing it through the standard view transform. And now we're going to subtract it. And you can see that it works. So I'm glad uh, that the error happened there so I could explain about clamping. So that's what clamping does on any of these. So clamping works the same for multiplication, subtraction, or whatever. Okay, so that's one way to do this. Is there another way? Of course there is. Let's try to do kind of the longer approach where we take uh, these and I'm going to subtract, meaning meaning we take the left circle, subtract away the right circle, and I'm going to set this to clamp, which means all these negative values we were talking about are now pushed up to zero. So again, zero to one range. And then let's do the same thing, but the opposite. And I'll show you a cool trick. Uh, so right now, these two subtract nodes are doing the same thing. But if we want to change the order, which we'll do what we wanted to, you can either, you know, do it like that, and it will flip it. We have too much stuff going on here. Let's view that. 
and it will flip it. Or what you can do is instead of doing it manually, there's a hotkey for this, and that is Alt S. And that's probably for swap or something. That's what the S is for. So Alt S can toggle these. So now we have uh, this moon, this moon, and then we want both of them. So how do we do that? Is it multiplication or addition? That's right, uh, Dora the Explorer viewer, that is addition. So let's just add these. Again, doesn't matter what order, if you do Alt S or not, because addition is, um, there's a name for this. It's not associative, it's a, a commutative. I don't know, I've, I've lost it. I haven't done math for a bit. But that's the other way to do it. So you can see we can make uh, two different node networks that achieve the same result. And uh, yeah, there you go. You can try to do all kinds of Venn diagram challenges with this, but uh, really we are going to be using these concepts all, all the time. Let me emphasize that. We are going to be using these concepts absolutely all the time. Subtracting things from each other and multiplying and adding. Make sure you actually understand this video. And then after this one, now that you've completed it, we're just going to talk about how to group stuff. So basically how how I made uh, this node over here, that's actually just a group of all these nodes, how I made that nice and compact and has one output. Uh, we're gonna talk about how to set that up and then we are gonna talk about texture coordinates, which one thing it lets you do is actually make these circles in the first place, because right now we only know how to handle something that is uniform, the same everywhere. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, the best way to support me is via Patreon. You can donate there, you get benefits, but really the point is if you wanna support me, that's the way to do it. Um, likes and subscriptions help as well, but just not as much. But um, yeah, one take, not bad. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. See ya.